Well, hello there. Um, last Sunday I did my weekly analysis and like always I point out some nice opportunities I see for the coming week. Um, one of those highlights uh, was the Australian dollar against the New Zealand dollar. Um, this is a great opportunity. Um, there are several uh, interesting trading strategies uh, that uh, are interesting for this trade. So let me uh, take you through my analysis process from beginning to end and how and why I look at the market like this. Um, we are looking at uh, this currency pair right now. Um, as you can see, price came down from the beginning of, this was October 2012, and it, this is the weekly chart by the way. It came down, it came down, and then somewhere around here things started to shift. This was 2014, so between 2014 and right now which is of course 2017 it's the 20th the 20 w 21st actually of February um, I always start at the bigger time frame so what I'm doing right now is I'm I'm, I'm looking at the uh, the weekly chart uh, I just pointed out that price price was trending a couple of years ago but actually since well this this is let's say the beginning of 2014 so three years this market has been there's no reason. Uh, there's no, nor 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 Australia nor New Zealand. None of them are uh, are having programs like quantitative easing, uh, you know, to 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 print money. And none of uh, none of the countries are uh, lowering rates or, or um, maybe maybe uh, lifting rates. You know, uh, hi, uh, there's no reason that that we have to 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 think about uh, why this this price will be moving differently than in this range so from the bigger time frame um, let me see I always start with drawing lines on the bigger time frame and I will do this on the smaller time frame as well as you guys can see this is an interesting level right here why because price came down and struggled around this area then it came back up struggled again penetrated a little bit but bounced back off and then once it really got through this level price moved away pretty fast after that a couple of weeks you know don't forget we're looking at the weekly price came back but got rejected right away then a second attempt got rejected right away right away and we are we made an even lower move then afterwards price came back consolidated for a couple of weeks and did some attempts to penetrate this area but it just didn't happen so this is a very interesting area then of course we came into this area again we see you can see it on the pin bars try to penetrate this level didn't happen so for me 112 let's 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 say 113 1.13 this is an absolute uh, resistance very important zone very uh, big volume uh, this this is not a level we're gonna just run through right away so that being said um, another thing we see this of course is the bottom price never came below this level uh, in the last couple of years so that should be a important level as well then over here we got some struggle with price one two three acted as support a couple of times and now we are hovering around this area so right now the last couple of months this level gets doesn't get the respect it did in 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 the in the past, and I think to me this one would be a level as well because here price got uh, rejected. It was a resistance here. It was support here. It was some kind of support here. It was resistance and some kind of support support. So just four lines, but these are levels that uh, I think are interesting or, or I should know uh, should know about. Then I zoom in on the daily chart. Um, and this will give me a picture of the current day until that's that that day back in this is April April last year <coughs> so we're this is almost a year we're looking at this is the daily chart well something pretty obvious happens and that's this level so that's one and this level as well is an interesting one because the obvious price broke through uh, 
couple of retests we see those pin bars price didn't manage to go through this level um, then we see the level below and support pin bar support 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 so quite obvious why I draw in these horizontal lines it's just because I see uh, very obvious and important support and resistances so with those uh, on the map we see the following that um, we are near a very important resistance zone so um, um, price has been uh, has bounced off this previous support struggled no, not, not that much yeah, of course it did because ran into this um, resistance zone fell back and then did a second attempt and broke through pretty convincing uh, it took out this resistance level it took out this resistance level with some some struggle and now over here it found some struggle but today it penetrated that level as well so I am looking at the current level what will happen around this area I want to see I want to know if price will break through or will bounce off again around this resistance area I don't know and I'm not gonna predict that but I know for a fact that this is an important zone uh, and I wanna um, I wanna keep an eye out if price will turn and drop or whatever will happen around here so um, that being said I also uh, as you can see those pin bars sometimes it, it actually penetrates the level sometimes it just hits exactly this resistance and, and comes back but you also see that price attempts to get there but just doesn't really make it here it happened mm, not you know they, they touched touched the level but it's never an exact line it's never exactly the um the touch of our resistance or support it's always that's the, that's the reason why I draw um, supply and demand zones let me draw one in over here as you can see in this zone price struggled quite a bit to get through um, same thing goes down here um, let's say this level here was a level where price when it reached this zone then price bounced off so let me point it out for you guys um, this is what I call a <coughs> demand zone and a supply zone well and especially the second one supply zone that's the zone we are entering the area we're entering right now that's over here so supply and demand so we see that today price reached that zone it's, it's getting closer to this resistance and you see that small reaction of price where uh, we see this this pin bar I always take my decisions on the four hour chart so let's zoom in one more time I never go to the I, well, sometimes but mostly I do not go to the hourly and everything uh, everything below because to me that's too much noise I can read the charts properly so this is that support uh, supply zone this is the demand zone near resistance down here the support is just what we pointed out on the daily and the weekly this green thing is the the, the zone I am watching <coughs> now as you can see price has been struggling around here pretty volatile going up going down I think this is what I call this let, let's point that out um, to me this is what happening what's happening over here um, well let me put it like this can I pick this thing <laughs> let's put it like this this is what I call oh wait a minute wait a minute let me let me cancel this one let me cancel this um, I wanna yes a call out that's better so um, this is what to me is what's happening this is a battle between buyers and sellers 
War between the bulls and the bears, of course. Bulls versus bears. <coughs> so, I hope you guys can read this. Probably you can. So, this is what's happening over here. This in this zone, buyers and sellers are, are going to move price further up or further down. Well, in this case, if you want to point out this level. Um, you know this 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 was the battle area, and I think we can all conclude that the buyers or the bulls have won this battle because they managed to put price one more time up in that area. Uh, me as a trader with some experience, I was not thinking about shorting this just yet because I th this is too much room for me, and often when price is volatile like this and bulls and bears are battling um, often you see one more move and of so oftentimes the amateur traders get tricked into this one uh, because that last move you know fear fear of missing out FOMO I don't know if you ever heard of that but people start going short in this area and then get stopped out because price will move one more time um, well, that happened. I think, still think there can be another push to that resistance line. So for now, I am uh, not doing anything, but of course, I'm watching this. But this is all about price action: the higher highs, the lower lows, the zones. We 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 pointed out the range. Um, of course, pretty obvious. Talking about price action, this this high got broken around here. We started to see a new high. Price came back. Um, the resistance acted as support. So this this low became a higher low around here higher high higher low higher high higher low and then we saw a lower low lower high even a higher high and higher low so there was some indecision around here and then price came back pretty aggressive once the sellers won and the buyers took their profits or their stop losses got hit and we were in this area so this this is just a little price action history over here the zone got touched, uh, price moved away pretty aggressively, started broke those highs, so we started to see higher highs, and this is the first high, but looking back at this, we still didn't see uh, a higher high. This level, quite obviously, we knew that price would have been struggling around here. Price fell back, didn't make a lower low, um, and started rallying back up, broke this high broke this high and eventually we're at this level so we want to catch this short trade that's that's the thing we the, the hypothesis hypothesis is that price will touch this zone will touch this resistance and probably turn around again and move back down um, let me put in some indicators because I do not I can say it enough you do not trade an indicator I talked to a lot of you guys on Instagram a lot of you guys uh, through through social media and when I ask you guys you know I want to help please explain to me what's your strategy what's your what's your plan mm. and, you, and, and a lot of people start telling me well this is my plan I trade the RSI uh, once uh, the RSI shows uh, an overbought signal I go short okay well that's not a strategy guys that's that's just it's just theory from the internet um, that's not how you professionally trade. There's, there's way more, as you can see right now. We I've been talking for almost 14 minutes now. <coughs> of course, when I do my own analysis and I don't have to explain everything, I'm done within 10 minutes. But I I think this video uh, will be like 20 minutes before I made my, my we made my whole point. So Bollinger Bands is a indica indicator. I use it quite often. Um, this is the way I use it. Um, Price broke the moving average over here, started trading above moving average. So uh, this is to me a potential. This is actually an uptrend. Uh, price struggled around here, but it broke the moving average. I should be out of this trade when this happens. And then again, we break the moving average. I re-enter around here, and we start rallying quite nicely. So. Over here we don't see lower lows, there's nothing wrong yet. We actually had to wait for quite some time. Trading is waiting, that's the hardest part about trading sometimes. And then we even got another high, so your 
your entry from here is, is not just 1000 but now it's 1200 so there's still more room to make more money um, that being said um, price uh, broke the moving average and started rallying uh, on the outside of the Bollinger Band so that's an indication that momentum is really strong uh, and over here you see that the Bollinger Bands uh, move back together so the momentum is fading we also see that the direction of the moving average and the Bollinger Band start moving sideways so we we were in a sideways moving market for a couple of days maybe a couple of weeks two or three weeks um, <coughs> well finally uh, price hovered around the moving average uh, and it made another move to the upside this is where we at right now um, there is another indicator that I use from time to time I, I actually use it pretty often that's the relative strength index I not not traded like overbought oversold or something like that this is how I use the relative strength I got this one on my radar a couple of weeks ago two weeks ago why because momentum was strong it came into this area um, and then I saw that around here we made a high then we made a higher high so this is the high that's this this level this higher high doesn't show up on the RSI anymore so what we see here is that the RSI is showing us fading momentum actually it's showing us that momentum to the downside is growing so the thing I probably did was the following I spotted this level and this to me this is what I call divergence so let me put that on the chart as well over here to me this is divergence which means that the RSI is showing a different picture uh, than I'm seeing on the chart so price action is showing me higher highs even this one this higher high is 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 a low compared to this to this high so for now you know we can adjust that line a little bit but we are still seeing divergence so this to me is a very interesting uh, sign that something is happening in price here um, the momentum is shifting we are near a supply zone we are near resistance so that being said I think we are all in um, oh wait a minute that's it <coughs> so this is um, another indication that the trend is shifting um, now you guys want to know where where will we enter well ideally this is uh, this is what I'm looking at I already see the divergence so I think momentum is, is losing to the upside so I think we will see a downward move I want to see a couple of things this is what I want to see I want to see a clear break and a strong bar like we saw over here of the moving average well that's not not happening at the moment I think we see another push and I think we'll we will see a spike wait a minute this one like we saw th these kinds of spikes I think we're gonna see a pin bar that will penetrate the resistance a little bit and that will determine if price will break it's also possible that we break resistance and we see a strong moving bar moving through that resistance but looking at the divergence on the RSI I don't really think that is what we will be seeing I think we will see a move up afterwards we will see a reaction back down and often what you see is a second attempt to break that resistance uh, and once that fails we go for a retest of the moving average that will be around this area and once that breaks we will see a strong move back down um, well where will we see the first problems in price that will be over here because this actually we should draw this line in because for some reason price reacts in this area so actually we have a free fall from 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 up there back to this zone to so this 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 is pretty pretty nice trade. Um, thing is that when we trade this, we can probably have a very clear entry up there and a first profit around here. So wait a minute. 
to me this is a, this is a pretty pretty nice trade probably around the way we will see a pullback around here because price will react to this level then we see here that the previous support will probably act as resistance uh, this would be a great place to uh, maybe re-enter when you're a swing trader um, then we go for the second move probably a bounce retest of this previous level and then we go for a second time and we break and the way will be free for this one this is this is a very likely scenario um, of course we can find more uh, zones uh, in between where price will struggle the way I look at it now I already see this level which could mean some some delay in the downward movement or maybe a turn you never know so maybe this will be the first oh, the first hurdle we have to take probably a bounce whatever you know you can also put in some Fibonacci levels to get the feeling of where is price how how far will it retrace or whatever this is a huge range where prices uh, is, has been moving in for the last couple of years actually so pretty uh, pretty interesting well if if you want to re-enter around here of course it should be uh, a certain setup of course your stop should be uh, above a certain support or resistance level or above your moving average <coughs> or above a certain trend line um, this is also a very nice setup for your second trade um, and maybe, maybe maybe you wanna go for it one more time when price is over here you probably have a nice setup like this you can also trade trade a setup that just you know enter once let it ride and then you know do your thing but it's just to give you guys an idea of, of, so, of some trades we will be taking here I th you know maybe maybe ride it out back here down here you never know and this one can be further as well if you want but you want it maybe you want to be on the safe side it's all up to you so yeah it, it I, I like I say uh, pretty often I, I'm, I can't tell you where to get in where to get out I can tell you what your lot size is <coughs> it's up to you if you have an account of 1000 uh, euros and you want to risk uh, 100 on the straight then once you enter here then you have to see if if that's enough uh, for your price to be at minus 100 once it hits the stop loss that determines how big your lot size is um, and that also determines how big your profit is around here you don't pick your profits you pick your risk and once your risk is 100 in this case I think you have a uh, potential loss of 100 so your account would be 900 and I think you have a potential move I think 8 850 you know you can be from 1000 up to 18 and a half uh, or you can be down to 900 you know to me it's all about risk reward these are the things you look at these are the setups you want to trade I think this is a very very nice uh, way to look at the market so I, I put in a lot uh, um, I think this is uh, has become a very nice video um, <coughs> don't, don't don't just stare at the RSI or uh, the moving average try to look at the markets I think the way I just showed you, uh, you you have to know where price will struggle. You have to know where price will be um, uh, having having trouble or turn around or, or you, you know you you want to know where to take your profits with a plan, not just just do something. This is a level it could be interesting to draw in as well. What way I look at it right now, this could be a potential interesting move probably price will, will struggle around here also because there is a trend line then again this is trend line as well which is for now more relevant I think so also nice to put in so I hope uh, this 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 uh, this video helped I see I, I'm almost at 25 minutes now let's uh, let's break it up for today I think we are at the middle and that's that's one last thing I want to draw in I think we are at the, the middle of a great reversal trade that's what we're looking at today this is a classic setup for a reversal trade um, I wish you guys good luck 
Oh, wait a minute. Port reversal trade, not trend. This is it. So, great setup. Reversal trading. It's happening right now within this week or the next week. But we are. I am looking at the Australian dollar, New Zealand for this reason because there is great potential in this um, setup. Good luck, guys. Happy trading.